Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are unboxing a new mount for my observatory that I've just built outside. This is the Explore Scientific Exos 2 PMC8 and to be honest it's been sat in the dining room for nearly two weeks and I've been dying to unbox it but I've just been working so hard trying to get the observatory finished so I can actually put this beast in there that I've just had to sort of ignore it. Um, but I really need to check that everything's okay with it. And with my track record with Wi-Fi controlled mounts, I've tried one before. It was a budget uh, Astro Fee, Astro Fi by Celestron, and it did not go well at all. I could not get that thing to align. But this seems a bit different. It's for a start. It's not only Android and iOS controlled, but you can also control it with your Windows 10, Windows 8 laptop. And that's kind of what I'd be interested in doing for my observatory anyway. I want to be in there with a laptop controlling everything. Let's get unboxing this. He's got a knife. <laughs> that's not a knife. That's a knife. I'll put that down before I scratch something. Kind of struggling for space in my kitchen. Anyway, what we got? We've got an instruction manual, spreader. Ah, power pack. You don't actually see that with some mounts, actually. Like if you buy like a Skywatcher or a Celestron, they don't usually give you a power pack. But yeah, it's got something you can plug in at the wall, so I'm quite pleased about that. Just go straight for the mount head, eh? Why not? Uh, so the motors on this are stepper motors, not servo motors. I've had a Celestron AVX in the past and that was a really good mount. Apart from the fact they had servo motors and no proper bearings. You appear to get two counterweights with this mount. I don't know how much each one of them is in weight. It'd be awesome if they're five kilogram ones. They do, that one feels quite heavy. That might be five kilograms, but I'll wait and have a look. Try and use the bag to get the counter weight off. Is this gonna be the same size? Yes, oh my word. That is, you could do a serious workout with those. I will weigh them though to check. So this must be the PMC8. And the reason I say that is because it's got PMC8 written on it. So effectively, that's like a little computer with eight little processors in it then. That controls and like a, it must have a Wi-Fi module in there, I guess, obviously, for it to work. But that is metal. It's heavier than you'd think. Is there anything underneath the, the box? Yeah, so we've got some, got some cables in there as well. I'm assuming to connect to the motors from the PMC8. And this must be the tripod. The box is already slightly open. And that looks like a two inch tripod just by eyeing it up. Rather than a 1.7. I'm also baking hot as well. Can't believe I nearly did this video in a jump up. So is that, what is this? Oh, so you can run it off a, a battery pack. Now I'd be interested to see, A, how well it runs off a battery pack and kind of uh, how long it lasts off a battery pack. It might be that because it doesn't have a hand controller that it might not draw too much power, but if that PMC8 has got eight processors, that sounds like it might use a lot of power. So I'll keep you posted about how long the batteries last. I might start off with the batteries actually before I try the mains and we'll see how long, whether that's kind of a viable option for people that are quite portable and wanna just set up, set up away from a, a power source. Okay, I've just turned the tripod around so we get more of a side profile on camera. I think that'll be better. And we'll get the mount head on and get it all set up. So location peg there, so you want your azimuth adjustment to either side, you just need to kind of open them up a little bit so it fits on there. Now, if the spreader tray was captive, I wouldn't have to try and hold that while I bend down. 
and put this on, but you know, it's a small criticism, I guess. That Tommy bar is immense. It's like a two-handed thing. <laughs> Let's set this to my latitude, which is 52 degrees. Again, two Tommy bars. This seems to operate quite smoothly. That can be another issue with the Skywatch mounts because they have kind of this bendy bolt issue and they use really soft bolts. I think it's so you don't crack the, the castings of their mounts, but everyone ends up upgrading the bolts on them and you don't hear many people cracking the castings. So maybe they should sort of cotton onto that really. Now the arrow that points towards your altitude is jet black like the mount. So it doesn't stand out at all. So how are you expected to see that in the dark? That needs a bit of a luminous paint on it or something. Or, or orange to match the, the badge. This is a lot of mount for the money. So I can kind of understand why they'd not want to pay someone to sit there just stabbing a bit of paint on it. The clutches feel really nice actually. They've got, they've got a nice smooth locking mechanism, I'll put it that way. And what else we've got here? I mean, look at how easy that turns for balancing on declination. If that was a Celestron AVX, you'd almost be sort of forcing it round because they don't have the bearings that this mount's got. Let's try the right ascension. There's a bit more stiction with the right ascension, but it's buttery smooth. The saddle is a single Vixen saddle. It's not a double Vixen plus Losmondi saddle, but sometimes third party companies make adapters. There's two locking screws for safety. And we've got a screw on cap for the poloscope. So hopefully that won't get lost. It's not just a a push-in type thing, and now we can probably put the counterweight bar on. I'm comparing this to the Celestron AVX because it kind of, kind of reminds me of it in a few ways. Quite often with the Celestron AVX is when you put the counterweight bar on and did it up, it kind of interfered with, oh, Declination, that's it. It kind of interfered with the declination, like you tightened that up and it kind of like made the declination seize up. But this one, I've done it tight and that's lovely and smooth. So there we have it. So for size comparison, I'm kind of slim and five foot 11 ish basically. And this is the tripod fully extended. This is where the mount comes to on me. It's quite a heavy duty looking mat, whether it's up to the sort of like HEQ5 standard, AVX, Celestron AVX standard, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, anyway, another thing to mention, it's got a bubble level integrated, so that's nice. And so all we need to do now is attach the, the PMC-8. In, in my case, I'll be attaching it to the pier in my observatory, so it's not that big of a deal for me. But if you just want this as a portable mount, it looks like you strap it to the leg with that. And that's really heavy and it's metal. So it's going to be like clunking around. So yeah, I think like some kind of seat for it to go in would be better. I don't know if you could attach, have something on the spreader tray to put it on or... What is that? Is that like a little aerial? Is that an aerial for... Where's that plug in? What? This is what you get for not reading the... Ah, there we go. Ooh. Yeah, that, that doesn't kind of feel very safe. So connections for the PMC-8, looking at the front of the instruction booklet for it. We've got a status LED array there, a 12-volt 12, a 12 power supply, reset button, right ascension, declination, ST4, and serial port for your PC connection. I think there needs to be a bit more information out there on YouTube and on the web about this mount because compared to other mounts, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount. There's stuff, there's promotional stuff by Explore Scientific themselves and one or two other independent reviews. Let's try and shed some light on this uh, 
Exos 2 PMC8. They appear to be attached now. I'd have to do some cable management, I think, by, by the looks of it. Right, the, the mains adapter is an American plug fitting by the looks of it, or European. I don't know, I should really know by now, but it's got a UK plug adapter. Yeah, you have to try and squeeze those pins in and Oh yeah, yeah, we've got it now. Okay, that's not as bad as I initially thought. Let's plug it in, see what happens. We have life, you can see the LEDs. I can hear the motor going just by plugging it in. So in its most basic form, if you wanted to track the sky, you could simply do that. You get an idea of how big this mount is and the kind of features and the quality it's got from this video. Hopefully I've tried to convey that. It's a, a solid mount. There's a little cover on the side of the mount that you can take off and reveal the, the belt drive and the gears, the aluminium gears there. So that's quite handy. If you've got a problem, you can sort of take that off and have a look. I was thinking about going through the Explore Star setup on the laptop, but we've been going at it a while now, so that's split this up into several videos. And if you want to follow along with how it goes setting this up with a computer and a, a tablet, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and follow along. Hit that bell so you get notified of my content. And also I do lots of other stuff on the channel as well. I'm building an observatory outside. I'm just vlogging the whole thing and doing little time-lapse videos so you can see how to build a, an observatory out of an old shed that you've got knocking around. Um, I do lots of DIY projects, astrophotography on a budget. I do really budget astrophotography, even with non-tracking mounts, like I'm, I'm imaging with a Heritage 150p at the moment, which has absolutely no tracking whatsoever. And I'm getting some pretty reasonable planetary images uh, out of that. So if you want to follow along and see how that goes as well, lots of things going on. So please feel free to follow along and I, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Take care.